can you believe that 2018 is almost over? With that said, it was a pretty good year for gaming. I'm going to highlight my favorite titles of the year. You know, whether you're doing holiday shopping or trying to catch up on the games that you missed, these are the games that really stood out to me that I think you should give a try. Two quick things with my lists. There are no particular order, and some games might be missing just because I didn't have the chance to play them, like Red Dead Redemption 2. You all know that game is amazing. It will win a bajillion Game of the Year awards. I'm waiting for the PC version. Doesn't mean it isn't worthy of that awesome spot, but I'm just holding out for it. Second thing is the FPS version of this video is gonna come out early December. I'm waiting for Just Cause 4 to review, you know, best FPSs of 2018. I know it's a third person game, but usually those Just Cause titles are pretty fun. All right, let's dive into it. First up, Octopath Traveler. JRPG that totally resonates with the old school fans with this great art style, probably the best video game soundtrack of the year. It is phenomenal and a great battle system. I love Octopath. Now the gimmick here that is the one critique and why I battled to put it on the list, you have eight characters and you can do those eight characters four chapters in whatever order you want. As such, the story doesn't really have the characters interacting in very meaningful ways. Yeah, there's tiny little vignettes where they'll talk to each other, but the story definitely feels fragmented by this unique angle that lets you pick and choose how you want to play the adventure. But man, what a great reimagining and very successful for Square Enix. Now I just want to see them take the Octopath system and bring it to a more, you know, solid, continuous story like Final Fantasy VI in this style would be unbelievable. The other warning I have is the later chapters, you will be doing some level grinding. And for those of you who said that you got through the game with no level grinding, how? Please tell me how. I've definitely put in a lot of time trying to get my characters recommended level ready for those later chapter fours. So it's a great game, but it has definitely some drawbacks. I love it. It's worth exploring this more Square Enix. Next up, Monster Hunter World. I had no idea when I picked up this game how much I was going to enjoy it. Almost 150 hours later, and I still find the game to be one of the best $60 that you can spend in gaming currently. One of the best co-op multiplayer experiences in a long time. The last Monster Hunter game I played was Freedom on the PSP, so I had somewhat of an idea of what the franchise was like, but World did a great job of making it accessible to players in the West, and it surely worked as it set records across the board for sales. Additionally, there was free DLC support all through the summer this fall, and we're still getting some new quests and monsters as we speak. This isn't going to come as chock full as like a Monster Hunter Double Cross or 4 Ultimate, and frankly, I think that's the one area it's weak in is just the amount of weapon variety and monster variety, but it very easily makes up for that, especially if you're a new player to the franchise, so long as you're willing to, you know, engage with this game, play it with other people. I loved it so much that I went and imported Double Cross before it came to the States later that year. I want to see more games like Monster Hunter releasing where you put down your initial investment and you just have a game that's built for replayability. I can't say enough good things. Monster Hunter World, phenomenal. Pick this thing up. Next we have God of War. Man, it is so hard not to respect this title. Graphically, incredibly impressive. The music's fantastic, and the story experience is told in such a seamless way that it really does just completely revolutionize the God of War franchise. You can't view it as just like a sequel, it has to be viewed from a much grander, more macro sense as a complete reimagining of what this franchise is. The camera does not cut throughout the entire adventure and journey. The developers were so deliberate with every choice that they made. It tells a bittersweet tale that is one worth experiencing. I have to admit, I'm still a, a fan of the older God of War top-down style combat, but this third-person reimagining was impressive and managed to carry forward a lot of the tropes and the things that players love about the God of War series in a completely different package, a different viewpoint, and with new play styles. Out of everything I played in 2018, I think this one represents probably the biggest, like most impactful hit to me in terms of just like sheer quality. And while I may still prefer some of the older God of War games combat styles, I respect deeply what they did with the new PS4 God of War. It's worth checking out. And the final game on my list and ultimately what I think is my game of the year is Celeste. This beautiful platformer is a very hard game, but manages to make it accessible by its design. You know, games like Super Meat Boy are so memorable because of their challenge, 
And Celeste is along that same line, that same vein of, of thought, but it is much more addictive. You don't get frustrated because of the way the screens are designed and everything feels like a challenge that you are more than capable of achieving. I think going through this game, I had something like 1400 deaths when I finally beat the game and didn't care. It was one of those things that I had to keep going. It was super addictive, beautiful music, very touching score paired with amazing visuals and buttery smooth gameplay. Finally, I think what hit me the most was the storytelling. Celeste really comes to wrestle with some hard issues. Depression, anxiety, rejection, and how we can conquer those emotions. And it does so in a way that isn't fanciful. It isn't, you know, unrealistic. It tackles the issues in a way that really is relevant to anybody at any age because let's face it you don't just delete problems from your life you don't just delete anxiety or delete rejection or depression you have to learn how to i hate to say live with it or work alongside of it but there is a mature story element here themes that are grappled with in a way that is just far beyond what i've ever experienced in like a 2d platformer that it's worth any of you guys playing those are my picks for 2018 games of the year. I do want to mention an honorable game here that didn't make it into the list, Life is Strange 2. I loved the original, but I want to wait for the whole season of Life is Strange 2 to complete before we talk about it further. What did I miss that you loved this year? I know there's tons of things like Spider-Man or Assassin's Creed Odyssey, Far Cry 5 and Forza Horizon 4. Let us know about those and your favorite experiences this year down in the comments below. As always, thanks for watching the channel. If you enjoyed, please subscribe for more. Follow me over on Twitter, at BBKDragoon, and I look forward to talking with you again very soon.